you love it, you hate it, you don't know what it is. I'm talking about MIDI QOL. This tool is one of the most complicated mods to get set up, but is awesome when you get it figured out and running. It really helps streamline gameplay. And in this video, I'm going to share everything that you need to know to really get it up and running as quickly as possible. So let's get started. As you open up the settings, the first page is pretty straightforward. The main things that I do here is I check the box for really high to private self roles, all of that, because I don't like seeing the little question marks pop up. Uh, and then I check this one because I am nosy and I like to see all whispered messages, but that's just me. Some of these won't really matter as much because they get configured in the workflow settings. Just make sure you have this box checked here and then let's go ahead and jump into the workflow settings. They have all of these separated into these different tabs. So starting with the GM tab, I do like auto rolling attacks. I also like it to ask if I want to consume the spell slot or uh, whatever the consumable resource might be for that one, a dragon's breath weapon, you know, there's different things. I like it to ask because I do a lot of testing when I'm building encounters and creating mods and stuff, and I don't wanna have to go back in there and keep adding things back like spell slots. So that's why I don't like it to automatically consume the spell slot or the resource. Late targeting is nice for certain spells and effects that I don't set up properly, but this is one that depending on your preferences, you might like to switch it to not display late targeting or to only display it if nothing was targeted. And by the way, uh, this is what it looks like when you click to do an attack. This thing just pops up, asks if you want to adjust any of the targets and you can either add or remove targets and then hit roll. Uh, for all these other ones, fast forward attacks, auto roll the damage, fast forward the damage, remove the chat card buttons after roll. Uh, these are all the settings that I like to use just to help things go smooth smooth and quick and not spam the chat with a whole bunch of different stuff. So when I roll an attack, this is what it looks like. It's all condensed down into this one nice little card. For the player section, it looks very similar. So we'll just move on to the workflow now. Uh, and really quick, if I'm going through this too fast uh, and you're trying to just copy all of my settings, I'll have a link to the JSON file to all of the settings that I use. So you can just automatically load it in here. If you don't know how to do that, we'll get to it pretty quick. So for the workflow, this is some of the settings that I use. I do like to have always target on template draw. So this is when you use something like fireball, it will automatically target everyone inside of the area of effect. I'm a fan of this, it helps things move along quickly. I also like having it auto remove the templates. Uh, this one is very nice, especially if you have anyone that uses booming blade, but really anytime, like even like a fireball, whatever, when you click to the next person's turn, the template will disappear. Uh, in here, I'll show that really quick. Now, the only time I require targets to be rolled is in combat, because if you don't do this, players won't be able to roll attacks or certain things unless they have someone targeted. And I, I just think it works best if you only require it in combat. So for these, uh, they're just here to help move things along quickly uh, for stuff that you have set up in the background. For the hit section, I do like to have it auto check if things hit or miss, but this is one of the things that I only wanna be able to see as the GM because for the players, they have certain abilities like Bardic Inspiration, stuff like that. They're meant to use after their roll, but before the results are determined. And so it just feels a little bit more fair that they don't get that immediate feedback. Now, if they're really paying attention, they'll see the health thing pop up like minus 10 health when they do their attack. And if they don't see it, then they know that they missed, but I don't know, I guess reward players for paying attention. I haven't really had an issue with that being a problem. Uh, so that's why I leave that. I also like to show how much it misses by or how much it goes over. Uh, and this is what it looks like really quick. Uh, and again, only you as the dungeon master or game master sees this, uh, but it's just kind of one of those things that's nice to see on there. Especially if you use like an optional rule, like if it hits their AC, it only does half damage, like that might be a nice thing to know. I do like to use Monk's token bar. I think that it is pretty convenient and it's very nice. I like being able to just click a button. I like the saves popping up in chat, so the players just have to click a button in chat, and if they don't have their character sheets open, it's still pretty quick for them to be able to uh, roll their save. I like it to auto apply damage because it helps combat move a little bit quicker and I don't need to apply the damage each time a monster or someone gets hit. Now for concentration, this one can be a little bit buggy and it's not the smoothest, but overall I still like using it because it helps me to remember to have them roll concentration whenever they take damage because it will automatically prompt them. But sometimes you'll see concentration things pop up when nobody's concentrating on a spell. 
not that big of a deal. You just remove the concentration and move on with your lives. Now for reactions, similar reasons, reactions don't always work the best, but I do like to have it on there because it helps me remember if somebody's used reaction and uh, it's just one of those things that sometimes can be a challenge to track. Now, it will automatically pop up this little icon here whenever they make an attack in combat and it is not their turn. So if you see that icon on someone, you know that they don't have their reaction and they automatically get the reaction back when their turn comes around. The next thing that this does is it gives uh, this reaction check time out. This is if they have something like a shield spell, how long they have to click shield before it disappears and it goes away. I like setting it at five seconds. I think by default, it's like 20 seconds, but that's super long, especially if the player is not paying attention. Anyway, I like it just being five seconds and they can either click shield or they can close out of it and then the attack will, will take effect essentially. Now, something that's kind of annoying with this is sometimes the prompt pops up whenever somebody gets attacked, even if they don't have shield or, or they might have some reaction they can use, but it's not necessarily applicable. If that is constantly happening, you can go into some of the effects in the settings and change that so that it's not popping up all the time, uh, but it's, it's usually not an issue or a problem. Something else that won't always prompt them to use a reaction whenever it's available. So sometimes like, especially with attacks of opportunity, it won't prompt them when someone moves out of their range but that's pretty easy to just handle how you normally do. And I like using this for both players and monster reactions, because again, just for tracking purposes, I feel like it makes things easier. In this miscellaneous tab, this is where you can export your settings so that you can save them on your computer if you ever want to load up different settings or, or whatever. This is pretty useful, and this is how I generate my JSON files, and this is how I pull my settings that we'll put on lines for you to download if you want. Then you can use this button, the import button, to load the settings in there. It is uh, pretty easy. Like I said, you just click that button, then click to choose a file and select the JSON file with the settings that you wanna use, and it's that easy. Some of these other settings, I like to merge the rolls onto one card. I think it looks a lot better, as well as condensing the attacks and damage rolls. That's how, again, they look like this. Now, you can add the extra buttons to the merge card, but this only matters if you don't have the auto roll damage selected. So here's what this looks like. If you turn off the auto roll damage and then you go over and you roll an attack, it will roll the attack and then this pops up where you can then actually switch it to rolling with advantage or disadvantage or you can just roll damage or you can roll the crit damage. So that might be nice for some people that want a little bit more control but you do have to do a little extra clicking with it. Some of these you might just want to go through and, and change and adjust based on your personal settings, especially when we get to the rules section. Now, the main thing for mechanics that I think is really cool, the main thing that I use here is that it marks creatures wounded when they fall to 50% HP. This is both monsters and player characters. So it makes it really easy for players and me as the dungeon master to look at the battlefield and you can see who is wounded and who's kind of getting low on health. If you're a player, you can see which people need healing or look to see what monsters you might be able to finish off. So, you know, this is basically bloodied. I like that it automatically does it. I think that it, it looks really clean. Then I also have it where it puts an overlay of the, the dead icon when they drop to zero. I don't have characters roll anything blind. I, I suppose you could if you wanted to. It, the option's there, but, uh, but I don't do any of that. Some of these things like expire one hit, one attack, one action on roll. I'll be honest, I don't know if they really do anything because I've messed with those settings and it doesn't seem to change anything, but feel free to play with it. Something else kind of cool with this is you can have it automatically do the height difference calculation for ranged attacks or the distance for the range attacks so you don't have to sit there and use math that uh, you haven't used since high school. You could also do some things like reroll initiative at the top of each round. That would probably help keep things a little more dynamic, but you'll want to check with your players beforehand just because that might throw them off if the initiative order changes every round. For rules, it's just different rules and optional rules that you could use like flanking and some of this other stuff. This is all just going to be personal preference stuff. This is what I use, but feel free to go in and change any of the different rules that you use at your table. It might be interesting to even go through some of this and see what new stuff you could be implementing into your games and some homebrew stuff that you can add in there. For your quick settings, these are just different options and preloaded settings that you could use, especially when you're first getting started. But obviously, you're going to ignore this because you're just going to go with my settings, right? Right? Well, anyway, that is MIDI QOL, and those are the settings that I use. If you have any questions, let me know, and I hope you enjoy.